Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin in five minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the stage for Sergeant First Class Petrie's promotion to Master Sergeant. There will be no comments made as they will all be a part of the retirement ceremony. Attention to orders. The Secretary of the Army has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and professional excellence of Leroy A. Petrie. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated leadership potential and dedicated service to the United States Army, he is therefore promoted to the rank of Master Sergeant, effective 23 July, 2014.
Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin momentarily. Please take your seats and turn off all cell phones and pagers until the conclusion of the ceremony. This is an indoor ceremony. There will be no saluting, and we will observe all indoor ceremony protocol. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the 75th Ranger Regiment Commander, Colonel Christopher Vanek, and the Regimental Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Chuck Albertson, welcome to the 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment Retirement Ceremony to recognize the contributions and sacrifices of Master Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie and his wife, Ashley, in their service to our country. The host for today's ceremony is Brigadier General Eric Carrilla, former Assistant Commanding General for the Joint Special Operations Command. The guest speaker is Admiral William McRaven, Commander, U.S. Special Operations Command. Admiral McRaven has deferred honors to Brigadier General Carrilla as the presiding officer for today's ceremony. Please stand for the singing of the national anthem by Mrs. Nancy Abair and the invocation by Chaplain Lasley. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly pray that you bless this great occasion that brings us together this afternoon, the retirement from active duty Army of Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie. Lord, we are profoundly grateful to have served for a season of our lives with this precious family. Leroy and Ashley and the whole family in service to our nation have given courage in the sacrifices of blood, sweat, and tears like the sky gives us the sun and rain. And Lord, we're thankful for that. But we are as grateful for their service as we are for their friendship over the years. So as they begin a new chapter in their lives, we ask that you bless them. Bless them in every conceivable way. You could ever bless anyone, anywhere, at any time. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me in welcoming the following distinguished visitors. Hold your applause until the end. Gold Star family members, Mrs. Taryn Yandel, Mrs. Melinda Barreras, Miss Amis Barreras, and Mr. Jim Regan. Also in attendance are Mrs. Joan Shally Kashvili, spouse of the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral and Mrs. William McRaven, commander of the U.S. Special Operations Command, General and Mrs. Darren McDew, Commander of the U.S. Air Force Air Mobility Command. Retired General Dan Kernan, 
Sergeant Major of the Army and Mrs. Ray Chandler, Mr. Howard Schultz, President and CEO for Starbucks, Command Master Sergeant Victoria Gamble, Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Commander, U.S. Air Force Air Mobility Command, Lieutenant General Joseph Votel, Commanding General, Joint Special Operations Command, Madeline Lanza, Spouse of the Commanding General for First Corps, Lieutenant General Raymond Thomas, Incoming Commanding General, Joint Special Operations Command, Command Sergeant Major Frank Grippy, Retired Lieutenant General, General Leroy Sisko, Mayor and Mrs. Ron Lucas from the town of Stillicum, Retired Major General and Mrs. Jimmy Collins, Civilian Aide to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. Dick Murray, Washington State Representative from the 28th District, Jay Norman, Spouse of the Command Sergeant Major for First Corps, Retired Colonel Bruce Crandall, Medal, Medal of Honor recipient, Retired Colonel and Mrs. Joe Jackson, Medal of Honor recipient, Major General Tom Thomas, Director of Health Operations, Defense Health Agency, Retired Major General Ed Trobaugh, Retired Major General and Mrs. John Hemphill, Retired Major General and Mrs. J.B. Taylor, Brigadier General Eric Carrilla, Deputy Commanding General for the Joint Special Operations Command, Brigadier General Kurt Sontag, Deputy Commanding General for the Joint Special Operations Command, Brigadier General Carl Turen, Deputy Commanding General of First Corps, Command Sergeant Major Sam Murphy from the 7th Infantry Division, Command Master Chief Prince from the Defense Health Agency, Sergeant Major and Mrs. Rick Merritt from the Office of the Secretary of Defense, Command Sergeant Major Marshall Huffman, Command Sergeant Major from the Western Regional Medical Command, Colonel Dave Kumashiro, Commander for the 82nd Airlift Wing. Thank you all for attending. <laughs> Master Sergeant Leroy Pet Petrie was born on July 29, 1979 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. He enlisted in the United States Army from his hometown of Santa Fe, New Mexico, in September 1999, something he wanted to do since he was seven years old. After completion of Infantry One Station Unit Training, the Airborne Course, and the Ranger Indoctrination Program at Fort Benning, Georgia, Master Sergeant Petrie was assigned to 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. He served as a Grenadier, Squad Automatic Rifleman, Fire Team Leader, Rifle Squad Leader, Assistant Operations Sergeant, and Weapons Squad Leader. During his career, Master Sergeant Petrie deployed eight times in support of the global war on terror, with two deployments to Iraq and six deployments to Afghanistan. Master Sergeant Petrie was awarded the nation's highest medal for his actions on May 26, 2008. His citation reads, The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Staff Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Staff Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty in action with an armed enemy in the vicinity of Paktia Province, Afghanistan, on May 26, 2008. As a weapons squad leader with Delta Company, 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, Staff Sergeant Petrie moved to clear the courtyard of a house that potentially contained high-value combatants. While crossing the courtyard, Staff Sergeant Petrie and another ranger were engaged and wounded by automatic weapons fire from enemy fighters. Still under enemy fire and wounded in both legs, Staff Sergeant Petrie led the other ranger to cover. He then reported the situation and engaged the enemy with a hand grenade, providing suppression as another ranger moved to his position. The enemy quickly responded by maneuvering closer and throwing grenades. The first grenade explosion knocked his two fellow rangers to the ground and wounded both with shrapnel. A second grenade then landed only a few feet away from them. Instantly realizing the danger, Staff Sergeant Petrie, unhesitatingly and with complete disregard for his safety, deliberately and selflessly moved forward, picked up the grenade, and in an effort to clear the immediate threat, threw the grenade away from his fellow Rangers. As he was releasing the grenade, it detonated, amputating his right hand at the wrist and further injuring him with multiple shrapnel wounds. Although picking up and throwing the live grenade grievously wounded Staff Sergeant Petrie, his gallant act undeniably saved his fellow rangers from being severely wounded or killed. Despite the severity of his wounds, Staff Sergeant Petrie continued to maintain the presence of mind to place a tourniquet on his right wrist before communicating the situation by radio in order to coordinate support for himself and his fellow wounded rangers. 
Staff Sergeant Petrie's extraordinary heroism and devotion to duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the 75th Ranger Regiment, and the United States Army. His actions on that day and his conduct ever since has set an enduring example of the fidelity, professionalism, and heroism of the United States Army Ranger. Master Sergeant Petrie's professional military education includes the Airborne Course, Combat Lifesaver Course, U.S. Army Ranger Course, Warrior Leaders Course, Jump Master Course, Advanced Leaders Course, Senior Leaders Course, and Combatives Level 1 Course. He has earned the Ranger Tab, Combat Infantryman's Badge, Expert Infantryman's Badge, Basic and Senior Parachutist Badges, and Canadian Parachutist Badge. His awards and decorations include the Medal of Honor, the Bronze Star Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster, Purple Heart, Army Commendation Medal with two Oak Leaf Clusters, Army Achievement Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster, Army Good Conduct Medal, third award, National Defense Service Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal with Combat Star, Iraq Campaign Medal with Combat Star, Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, NCO Professional Development Ribbon, numeral three, Overseas Service Ribbon, and the Valorous Unit Award. Master Sergeant Petrie is currently assigned to the 75th Ranger Regimental Headquarters at Fort Benning with duties as a liaison officer for the United States Special Operations Command Care Coalition, Northwest Region. He provides oversight to wounded warriors, ill and injured service members, and their families. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 75th Ranger Regiment, Colonel Christopher Vanek. Thank you. I, I think that applause is really for you, Leroy, not, not for me. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and friends of the 75th Ranger Regiment, and more importantly, Master Sergeant Petrie. Good afternoon. It is truly an honor and privilege to introduce to you our presiding officer for today's ceremony, Brigadier General Eric Carrilla. Brigadier General Carrilla is no stranger to this organization, having served as the 16th Colonel of the Regiment joining fellow former regimental commanders, General Buck Kernan and Lieutenant General Joe Votel, honoring us with their attendance today. Next week, he assumes the duty of the Deputy Division Commander for Operations of the Storied 1st Infantry Division at Fort Riley, Kansas. In fact, social media indicates that his better half is, re is receiving their household goods today at Fort Riley, absence his presence once again. Nice job, sir. <laughs> Brigadier General Carrilla has spent a significant part of his 26-year military career in our nation's special operations. He has served more than 10 years in the 75th Ranger Regiment in every leadership position from platoon leader to regimental commander. He has multiple deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan and is arguably our most experienced combat leader in our Army and in the United States Special Operations Forces, having spent more than five years deployed in combat. His tenure as the regimental commander marked the highest operational tempo in the history of the regiment, and during his command, the regiment continued to set the standard for global strike forces worldwide, while maintaining the reputation as the Army's premier raid force and finest light infantry in the world. It is most appropriate that Brigadier General Carrilla is a presiding officer for Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie's retirement ceremony today. He was the second Ranger Battalion commander when then Staff Sergeant Petrie performed his valorous actions on May 26, 2008 in Paktia Province, Afghanistan. Additionally, Brigadier General Carrillo was the regimental commander on July 12, 2011, when Master Sergeant Petrie, correction, Sergeant First Class Petrie, was presented the Medal of Honor by the President of the United States. Sir, we welcome you back to the 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. We sincerely pre appreciate the honor of your presence in the ceremony as we recognize the career of one of our nation's true heroes, Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming back Brigadier General Eric Carrillo. Yes. Thanks, Chris, appreciate those, those lies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished visitors, and most importantly, the family and friends of Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie, what a special day. I'm humbled and honored to be here today to take part in this ceremony. So I was at the lake water skiing this last weekend with family and friends, and our friend's twin 11-year-old boys asked me what I was going to be doing this week. I was bragging. I said I had the honor to preside over the retirement ceremony of an Airborne Ranger Congressional Medal of Honor, Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. 
I was immediately elevated to demigod-like status. But they looked at me and said, you need to look tougher. <laughs> if you're going to retire an Airborne Ranger Medal of Honor recipient, you got to look hard. you got to look mean. So in the ensuing epic, some say legendary, Battle of the King of the Floating Raft of Lake Martin, I broke my nose this Sunday. <laughs> so I now have this nice shiner, and much to the delight of two twin 11-year-old boys, they say I look tougher. I had to get that out there because I know there'll be a picture of me with this big black guy on... Uh... It was Abraham Lincoln that stated that a nation that does not honor its heroes will not long endure. And that's exactly what we're here to do today, to honor an American hero, Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie. Our society places the wrong people on a pedestal. Too often American society believes a hero is someone who can catch a football for $24 million, someone who can sing a song better than the next, or someone who pretends to be someone else in a fictional television script. Those aren't heroes. One can only look at the man sitting before you today to see a true American hero, a man of courage, honor, character, and the first to tell you, not without faults. Heroes are not born. They don't come from a certain class of society. They're not given special training to make them a hero. I believe the actions of a hero come from the heart. Let me tell you a little bit about the hero I know, Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie. Leroy was raised in Santa Fe, New Mexico, the middle child of six boys. He knew since the age of seven he wanted to join the military. He had several family members who had served in the military, grandparents, uncles, a brother, and a cousin. In high school, Leroy didn't always make the best choices in life, and he hung out with sometimes the wrong crowd, often ditching classes, and his mom was called to the principal's office to let her know he was suspended for fighting, and his grades were very, very poor. Leroy actually attended three different high schools. As he was transferred to the last high school, he self-identified the path he was on was leading to nowhere. As a junior in high school, Leroy found himself waiting on the street after school, checking the mail for the report card to see what he could change before his parents saw it. <laughs> when it arrived, he anxiously opened it up, but he knew the results before he saw it. Straight F's and one D. And the D was in cooking class, no less. <laughs> Not exactly the grades of a future Airborne Ranger and Medal of Honor recipient. Leroy looked at the report card and discussed as this piece of paper had his name on it. It represented him, not who he was, but how others could see him and how others would judge him. His dream of joining the Army was quickly fading and was not likely to happen. So he asked his parents to go to a private school where his brother had graduated and his dad coached girls basketball, St. Catherine's Indian School, his third high school. It took frequent raps on the knuckle with a ruler, staying after class to clean the classroom, but Leroy pulled himself together in his senior year made the honor roll and even student of the month his last month. His counselor pulled him aside and told him he was receiving an award from the Chamber of Commerce called the Bootstrap Award. He had no idea what the award meant, but at the event they told him it was for those that were able to pull themselves up, named after the army boots that had straps to pull over the, sol the soldiers' calves. For Leroy, it was yet another sign to join the military. Upon graduation from high school, Leroy's grandfather wanted him to go to college, even taking him to Highlands University and practically signing him up himself. But college wasn't for Leroy, as his real love was he wanted to join the military. When the fall start of college arrived, Leroy's dad looked over to him and said, I thought school started last Wednesday. Leroy looked at his dad and said, sure does, Dad, but I leave for basic training next week. Leroy scored high on the ASVAB, and while at the recruiter station, he looked at the MOSs available and stated he really wanted a Ranger contract. His cousin was at 2nd Ranger Battalion, herefore after named only as the battalion. The recruiter told him, we don't have any Ranger contracts left, but how about a petroleum specialist? Leroy quickly grabbed his keys and headed for the door. Hold on, said the recruiter. After multiple calls, he came back and Leroy had his dream, a Ranger contract, and he was off to basic training. His platoon sergeant in basic, basic training was a Silver Star recipient from 3rd Ranger Battalion from Mogadishu. While other platoons were learning the Infantry Creed and the Soldier's Creed, Leroy's platoon sergeant had a 5 by 8 with a Ranger Creed mounted on the wall in their platoon, area, or their platoon AO, and he pointed to it and said, Men, this is the only creed you need to know. After basic AIT, Airborne, and the Ranger indoctrination program, it was off to 2nd Ranger Battalion, the battalion. In September 2001, Leroy was in pre-Ranger out at Cole Range when the attack on our nation occurred, and the Ranger cadre just stated, keep training, you'll be going to war soon. And not long after those comments were made, Leroy was in Afghanistan. Prior to deploying, Leroy met his future bride, Ashley, and he told her he would be back. And much to his surprise, she was still there when he returned. And then in 2003, the Rangers were preparing to surge back to Afghanistan, and they had a few weeks to get ready. Ashley picked Leroy up at work, and on the drive home, Leroy mustered his most romantic voice and said, you know we get extra more money if we get married. 
She replied, you haven't even proposed yet, to which she replied, what do you think that just was? <laughs> a true romantic ranger fairy tale proposal. <laughs> After a quick visit to the Justice of the Peace, so began Leroy and Ashley's marriage. As Leroy would often state, while his job was more dangerous, Ashley's was far harder, and she basically raised the kids in her own with Leroy's continuous combat deployments and training for combat. In 2008, Leroy was on his eighth deployment in his sixth to Afghanistan. Operational tempo was extremely high. Leroy's platoon was doing almost nightly missions, hitting targets across Afghanistan. 26 May 2008 forever changed Leroy's life. I do not need to tell you the details of the mission, for you've already heard them, but in the end, we lost Buses Gaither Cole, Leroy lost his hand, and had his leg shot up. If not for the actions of Leroy, several more lives would be lost. A hero emerged. Not one who sought glory or fame, but a young man from Santa Fe, New Mexico, who did, uh, uh, did what others would not, he did what others thought unthinkable. Perhaps Mark Twain said it best when he describes the heroism of Leroy. Mark Twain states, unconsciously we all have a standard by which we measure other men. And if we examine closely, we find that this standard is a very simple one, and it is this. We admire them, we envy them for great qualities we often lack. Our heroes are men who do things which we recognize with regret and sometimes with a secret shame that we cannot do. After he was medevac to Germany, Leroy had his first opportunity to call Ashley. He told her he loved her, he lost his right hand, had been shot through both legs, but thank God his junk was still there. <laughs> My wife told me to cut that out, but that's what he said. <laughs> Leroy was ever the romantic. I cannot tell you in this forum what he told his ranger platoon as he was being evac'd away on the litter. While many would immediately have left the service after such a life-changing event, Leroy chose to stay on active duty. Lurie wanted to give back. He realized that the SOCOM Care Coalition and Fort Lewis Care Liaisons had done so much for his family, but we needed soft guys at Fort Lewis to take care of soft soldiers and families. Lurie was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor in July 2011, over three years from the fateful day in May 2008, and it would forever change his life. While he will tell you he was only doing his job, it was all about his Ranger platoon, it gave Lurie a great opportunity to travel, share great stories of others, and learn so much more. He would tell me that sharing the medal has been one of his greatest honors. Leroy's hardest decision would be to leave the service, and that's where we find ourselves today. He knew that some of his ailments were becoming worse, and he wasn't getting any younger. He knew it would be tough to leave, but it would give him more time with his family, and what a family he has. Leroy wants to go back to school and earn a degree in business management with a minor in accounting. His oldest son, Austin, just got home from his first year at college at Central Washington University studying criminal justice. Leroy's goal is to beat him to a degree. He just made the dean's list once and plans to stay on it. Brittany, their oldest, lives in New York City and working various jobs, but making it on her own and, in a few, and is working a few roles in off-Broadway shows with her dream to make it on Broadway. His daughter, Reagan, is an amazing athlete, ran at state, placed in two of three events, and Leary looks forward to watching her improve and grow and continue in his marksmanship training as boys come to try and date her. <laughs> Landon golfs, plays basketball, football, and loves to shoot. His goal is to make it to the NBA, the NFL, or the loftiest of goals, to be an Airborne Ranger. Ashley is continuing to take care of the home and family and is looking to take some photography classes here in the near future. She is the rock of the house and we all know is the real reason behind Leroy's success. So thank you, Ashley, and please a round of applause for Ashley. <laughs> Leroy will stay involved in the military and go to school, play golf, and help wounded service members and our veterans. He plans to open his own business, either as an entrepreneur or as a franchise. Leroy, I have absolutely no doubt you'll be incredibly successful in whatever you choose to do. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve with you. Never was so much owed by so many to so few. So please join me in a round of applause for Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie and this incredible family. It is truly an honor and privilege to introduce our guest speaker, Admiral William McRaven. In addition to being an, an enormous supporter of our regiment, he is currently the ninth commander of the United States Special Operations Command. 
Admiral McRaven has spent the vast majority of his career in special operations, and he has commanded at every level within the special operations community, including tours as a SEAL platoon leader, commander and a squadron commander for Naval Special Warfare Development Group and service as the 11th commander of Joint Special Operations Command. In addition to his immense command experience, Admiral McRaven served in a variety of staff and interagency positions, including a tour as a director for strategic planning in the Office of Combating Terrorism on the National Security Council staff. Truly a scholar warrior, Admiral McRaven is a published author and first graduate from the Special Operations Low Intensity Conflict Program at the Naval Postgraduate School, a curriculum he helped establish. Maybe more important, he considers himself a ranger by heart, as he ex has exemplified our creed and ranger ethos during a 37-year distinguished career in service of our nation. As Admiral McRaven prepares to transition out of the, the position of commander U.S. SOCOM, his legacy will be his success in taking the fight against terrorism globally, while making unprecedented an unprecedented commitment and progress in caring for our soldiers and their families, sp specifically through the U.S. SOCOM POTIF, or Preservation of the Force and Family Initiative. On a personal note, Admiral McRaven has served as the most influential mentor to senior rangers in our Army, both past and present. His friendship to General McChrystal, Lieutenant Generals Botel and Thomas, and his influence and training of Major Generals LeCamera and Fuller, Brigadier, Brigadier General Clark and Carilla, Colonels Odom, Vanek, Anderson, Harmon, Colonel Ellis, Colonel Sellers, and numerous other senior regimental leaders literally establishes him as the modern day father of our Rangers and their regiment. It gives me the greatest pleasure since assuming command of the regiment, and I would ask you to join me in the warmest Ranger welcome of the commander of the U.S. Special Operations Command, a warrior, a SEAL, a Longhorn, and a Ranger by action indeed, Admiral William McRaven. So a couple of years ago, Eric Carilla gave me a coffee mug, and he seems to think that everywhere I go, I take it with me. The coffee mug had on it that God made rangers so seals could have heroes too. Um, and I will tell you, probably truer words have never been written. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, mayors, council members, General and Mrs. McDew, General Botel, General Thomas, Mrs. Lanza, General Kernan, Mrs. Shelly Kashvili, other general officers, SMA and Mrs. Chandler, Sergeants Major, Gold Star families, friends of Mass Sergeant Petrie, and of course, Ranger Petrie, Ashley, and the extended Petrie family. Leroy, what a privilege it is for me to be here today to recognize your incredible contributions to the nation after your remarkable heroism earned you the Medal of Honor. You see, I didn't know Leroy before the Medal of Honor ceremony in the East Wing of the White House. But the Leroy Petrie I have come to know, and the Leroy Petrie who has contributed so much to wounded warriors and to soft operators everywhere, is one of the most extraordinary operators and extraordinary soldiers I have ever met. The medal aside, his efforts over the past three years on behalf of the veterans and their families warrant this kind of gratitude from every American. As you've heard, from Eric Carilla, Mass Sergeant Leroy Petrie's service up to 2008 was exceptional in every way. Since the act of heroism on May 26, 2008, through receiving the Medal of Honor in 2011, it was more of the same. The fact is, Leroy Petrie, before and after the medal, personifies all that is good about the American soldier, his courage, his humility, his love of family, his respect and admiration for the Army and the nation, Leroy Petrie is just a great, great soldier. Now, the Medal of Honor, as two of the recipients we have here today will attest, is sometimes a very difficult burden to bear. It comes with an unwritten responsibility that you, the wearer of the medal, must uphold the highest standards at all times that you must give of yourself constantly because now you represent not just yourself, not just the soldiers in your unit, but every soldier, 
every Medal of Honor recipient that ever lived and every American. But Leroy has handled this glorious burden with a grace and, dig and dignity that made the medal shine even brighter. When frequently warned about the weight of the burden, Leroy tells folks, the more I share it with people, the lighter it gets. And true to his word, Leroy has done just that, share his story, share his time, and share his energy with countless soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines. Since that day in 2011, Leroy has committed himself to advocating for and caring for our wounded veterans. During one event, Leroy, joined by Secretary Bob Gates, Oprah Winfrey, Gabby Gifford, and Coach Bob Knight, helped raise $30 million for traumatic brain injury research. And I guarantee you, the star of the evening was not Oprah Winfrey. Among, among the wounded soldiers, among the wounded soldiers, no one is more respected and more admired than Leroy Petrie. During a trip to uh, Walter Reed, Leroy was making some bedside rounds a few minutes before President Obama arrived. When the president met with the wounded, they were in awe. They told the president that Leroy Petrie had just stopped by. <laughs> this is the kind of respect Leroy has earned, and he has tirelessly worked to share his strength with those that need the support. But I think Leroy will tell you that he believes his biggest contribution has been working to expand the network of veteran internships to places like Starbucks and General Electric. Leroy was honored to be a guest at the 2013 press conference where Howard Schultz, the Starbucks CEO who is with us here today, announced his commitment to hire at least 10,000 veterans and active duty military spouses over the next five years. <laughs> Sir, thank you very much. Leroy's story sharing did not stop after helping to build the internship network for our veterans, but continued to service academies and to Brigadier General Darby's home junior high school, hometown junior high school, and to places like the College of William and Mary, where Leroy was the key speaker at the 2014 commencement. Along with his sense of duty and selfless service, Leroy has a sense of humor, albeit dry sometime. Leroy's response to the Chancellor of William and Mary, who happened to be the former Secretary of Defense, Bob Gates, the Secretary commented to Leroy that he hit a home run during the commencement speech, and Leroy replied, it's always good to have the SecDef owe you one. <laughs> like his career before May of 2008, his career since then has been characterized by a passion of taking care of wounded veterans and their families. He has done it with a tenacity and a determination befitting a ranger. And Leroy, I know that you will approach every opportunity from here on out with that same sense of purpose that you brought to the Ranger Regiment. Like the Ranger that you are, you will always lead the way, inspiring those around you to be better, to be better soldiers, to be better civilians, to be better people and better citizens of this great nation. Leroy, the nation owes you and Ashley and your entire family a debt of gratitude not only for your incredible heroism and your uncompromising duty, but because, but because how you have represented the finest army the world has ever known and how you have represented every American. <laughs> Leroy, may God bless you for your service to the Rangers, the Army, and the nation. And from this old sailor, fair winds and following seas, Leroy, thank you for everything. Thank you all very, very much. At this time, Master Sergeant Petrie will be joined on stage by his wife, Ashley, their children, Austin, Reagan, and Landon, 
Admiral McRaven, Brigadier General Carilla, and Colonel Vanek. Please rise and remain standing for the awards presentation. Admiral McRaven will present the Legion of Merit. Attention to orders. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Legion of Merit to Master Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie for exceptionally meritorious service in multiple positions of increasing responsibility and authority, culminating as a wounded warrior advisor. Master Sergeant Petrie's professionalism, leadership, and commitment to excellence will have a lasting impact on those with whom he has served. His outstanding efforts are in keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the 75th Ranger Regiment, the United States Army Special Operations Command, and the United States Army. The Order of St. Maurice recognizes individuals who have contributed significantly to the infantry in ways that stand out in the eyes of the recipient's seniors, subordinates, and peers. These individuals have also demonstrated the highest standards of integrity and moral character, an outstanding degree of professional competence, and have served the United States Infantry or the infantry community with distinction. Appearing before a most judicious and discriminating committee of tried and proven Army infantrymen and infantry patriots, be it known that Master, Sar Master Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie was tested and found worthy of special recognition for outstanding contributions to the community of the Army Infantry and is hereby inducted into the Honorable Order of St. Maurice for outstanding contributions to the infantry. St. Maurice is the embodiment of courage, justice, commitment to principle, leadership, and gallantry. So too, the aforementioned individual embodies these qualities and represents excellence in the infantry. Therefore, the Chief of Infantry and the President of the National Infantry Association acknowledge that this patriot is due special honor and respect for now and posterity. The Commander's Award for Public Service is hereby awarded to Mrs. Ashley Petrie for exceptionally meritorious service in support of the 75th Ranger Regiment from May 2008 to July 2014. Mrs. Ashley Petrie devoted countless personal hours and resources as a mentor and spokesperson for wounded warriors. Her personal example of strength and character directly impacted wounded service members and their families. Mrs. Ashley Petrie's exceptional service is consistent with the highest traditions of civilian service and reflects distinct credit upon her, the 75th Ranger Regiment, and the United States Army. Admiral McRaven will now present Mrs. Petrie with the Shield of Sparta, heroine of infantry. This recognizes individuals who have contributed significantly to the promotion of the infantry and the families of infantrymen in ways that stand out in the eyes of the recipient's peers. The National Infantry Association hereby recognizes Ashley Petrie with the award of the Shield of Sparta, heroine of infantry, for having served the infantry community with distinction, for having demonstrated a conspicuous contribution to the infantry family and community, for representing the highest standards of integrity, moral character, professional competence, and for demonstrating a volunteer and supportive spirit. Appearing before a most arduous and discriminating committee of tried and proven Army infantrymen and infantry patriots, be it known that Ashley Petrie was found worthy of special recognition for outstanding contributions to the community of Army infantry and is hereby awarded the Shield of Sparta, heroine of infantry. Please be seated.
Admiral McRaven will now present Master Sergeant Petrie with a certificate of appreciation signed by the President of the United States in recognition of Master Sergeant Petrie's sacrifice and service to our nation. Brigadier General Carrillo will present Master Sergeant Petrie with a Certificate of Appreciation on behalf of Lieutenant General Joseph Votel, Commander of the Joint Special Operations Command. It reads, I would like to extend my personal thanks to you for your devoted service and constant support of this command throughout your tour of duty from September 1999 to July 2014. Your courage and tremendous sacrifice throughout your tour were absolutely vital to the mission. Your service has been inspiring to all of us in the JSOC family. Thank you for your patriotism and personal sacrifice. Colonel Vanek will now present Mrs. Ashley Petrie with a Department of the Army Certificate of Appreciation signed by the Chief of Staff of the Army in recognition of her steadfast devotion and service to her husband and our nation. Admiral McRaven will now present Mrs. Petrie with a Certificate of Appreciation from <laughs> Lieutenant General Joseph Votel, Commander of the Joint Special Operations Command. It reads, in recognition of your devoted service and constant support to our, your husband throughout his tour of duty from September 1999 to July 2014, an assignment such as this is a family affair that requires commitment by both the service member and his entire family. Your courage and sacrifice throughout your husband's long duty hours and many operational absences were absolutely vital to him and inspiring to all of us in the JSOC family. Thank you for your patriotism and personal sacrifice. On behalf of the officers, NCOs, and Rangers of 2nd Battalion, Specialist Snodgrass will now provide Master Sergeant Petrie with a dozen red roses to present to Ashley Petrie in appreciation for her steadfast support of him and the Army. Specialist Grady will provide Master Sergeant Petrie with roses to present to his daughter Reagan and battalion coins for his sons Austin and Landon in appreciation for their support. Brigadier General Carrillo will now present Master Sergeant Petrie with his Department of the Army Certificate of Retirement and PIN to certify that he has served faithfully and honorably and is retired from the United States Army, effective 23 July 2014. It is with great pleasure that today we present Master Sergeant Petrie with the colors of our nation. The colors are being presented by Brigadier General Carrilla for over 15 years of dedicated service to the U.S. Army and the United States of America.
Please return to your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, the guest of honor, Master Sergeant Retired Leroy A. Petrie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can't tell you uh, how much it means to me to have all of you here, as well as uh, how difficult it is to uh, follow up some of your heroes here on stage. My heroes. Good afternoon, distinguished guests. I'm honored to be here with so many, traveling on busy schedules, long distances, and in the middle of the week to be here today. Thank you. Your support today and throughout my career has impacted me greatly and helped develop and reinforce the soldier and person I am today. Thank you to our veterans and our service members because without it, and their service, because without it, I would have not have been born and raised into a free country. And please thank your families as they sacrifice right alongside of our service. A special thank you to our Gold Star, Gold Star families in attendance. Your sacrifice and burden you bear is the greatest. Please never forget that you are not alone and you only need to look around and know that every active service member and veteran are here for you. We are family. Thank you to all of you here in attendance for taking the time out of your lives to help make this day great. Ashley, Austin, Reagan, Landon, Brittany who is not able to be here today, you, and you have endured the heaviest burden of my career. Raising a family, maintaining a home, supporting our children, and dealing with an ever so busy and changing schedule. At times it was an emotional and stressful dealing with the changes in our lives. You have all been there for me and, I, and even though may have not been there physically all the time, I never stopped thinking of you. And I love you all. John Ablon. Tony, Noggle, and all, of, all the rest of my friends that are here today, you are all family too. Thank you. Lois, thank you and Leo for being there for us. Mom, you taught me sacrifice and selfless service. Through your actions long before the Army. All they had to do was reinforce it. Thank you for always instilling the values and the morals of being a great person. To my brother, thanks for being there throughout my life. And thank you to our other three brothers not able to be here today when you get home to see them. See you guys soon. My father who not, could not be here today, thanks for all your support. The men at Second Ranger Battalion. Those of the past who led the way and set the example for us to follow, thank you. The men here today, I thank you. As my guard of this country in uniform comes to an end, I know you will be there carrying on, continuing to defend our Constitution and our great nation against all enemies and will give me comfort to know that I can enjoy the rest of my life 
with my family because you said I volunteer. The future is changing and the known battles are ending. But I have no doubt that evil people are out there and still planning and doing nefarious activities. Learn that word from you, sir. <laughs> Against the innocent and you will have to adapt to the to every possibility in the next battlefields. We as soldiers do not have the luxury of choosing where or when we go to war or for how long. This battalion has been through so much and I know they will continue to be prepared at a moment's notice to go anywhere in the world to lead the way when called upon. The leaders I have been, I have had have been great. They have taught me everything I know about the military and becoming a good leader. Thank you for the amazing examples, and I will always look up to you. Throughout my career, I have been on many missions, seeing firsthand the courage and valor of the men, this battalion, as well as the positive impact that our presence has achieved while overseas. That is what kept me going, was finding the good in all we did. I saw Afghanistan change throughout the years, the support of the locals when you walk up to them, the roads, the schools being built, and so much more good that made it all great. To all have been there during my recovery, from the doctors, friends, family, to the nonprofit organizations that helped my family, I thank you for you have truly made my recovery and my life easier. Some of those, troop, Faraday's Troops First Foundation, Lead the Way Foundation, Military Warrior Family Support Foundation, Sons of South Fork, Special Operations Warrior Foundation, Point de Hoc Foundation, 2nd Ranger Battalion Support Foundation, Team Fast Tracks, who uh, was supposed to jump for us, but uh, weather got us. That's what we, uh, we always uh, are apt to in here in Washington. Halo for Freedom Foundation. Thank, thank you for all you do for our veterans. And thank you for uh, getting me jumping again. Look forward to many more with you guys. Dana Bowman. Those of you who haven't met him, he's a personal friend of mine that's here today. Uh, quite an inspiration. Thank you for uh, being a great friend and an in inspiration to so many, including myself. Mr. Howard Schultz and Roy Guzm, if, Guzm, if you're here, I know Howard's here. Uh, thank you to Starbucks and GE for being examples in hiring our veterans and taking care of them. Your actions will affect more than you know and set the example. Thank you for your friendship and all that you do. To all that support our military and our rangers and their families, thank you. I have earned a few awards along the way, each, each one for what I thought was just doing my job and doing what was right and had to be done. As a Medal of Honor recipient, the choice is made by the individual. To do nothing with it, to accept the extra stress, the pressure, to do what I believe there is a need for and share it with as many others as possible. I am able to keep it, but it represents the men and women of uniform who are serving, who have served, and especially those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you, Joe Jackson and Bruce Crandall for being here and being my friends and great examples. President Obama stated at my ceremony that our heroes are all around us. As I travel the country, I have the opportunity to speak at numerous schools, events, and I always tell them what that statement means is that you don't have to be nationally recognized, sometimes not even acknowledged to be a hero. You could be a hero even to one person by making their life better. What may seem as a small act to you can mean the world to others. As veterans, we hope to be upstanding citizens and good examples in our communities. We want the youth of our nation not to become a drain on society, but rather contribute to its success. Often I am asked how I had the courage to what I'd do what I did. My reply is a word that gives you ability to do more amazing things than you ever thought possible. We don't use it too much in the military, seldom, seldom heard in the Ranger Regiment, except for ceremonies or when talking of beer, but we all have it, and that's love. I look at those guys, I look at each ranger here today, 
even, even a seal. <laughs> As my brothers, my children, my family, and I would have done the same for any of them. As a leader, I was also charged with the responsibility to those families and to those around me to keep them safe to the best of my ability. I did not get myself off the battlefield that day, nor did I recover alone. The team on the ground, the care providers, and those supporting me through my recovery are the ones I have to thank. My Medal of Honor is not for self, but for others. As a constant reminder to continue to learn from those around me and set the example for others to follow. I am proud that it has brought recognition to the 75th Ranger Regiment and the battalion and special operations. Often they are uh, returning from a deployment in the dark, almost immediately begin training without any fanfare or parades. Welcome home 2nd Ranger Battalion from this battalion's 17th deployment. Many of its leaders with most of those trips under their belt. Can we give uh, them a round of applause to the men of 2nd Ranger Battalion. Thank you. I look around and I, I uh, a little bit I got to see some of you. This, this ceremony for me has been almost more special than the Medal of Honor ceremony. Why? Because I get to share it with all of you. I was limited to space there. I knew many friends were watching on TV or meant well wishes, but it, uh, it, uh, for me it's been somewhat of a reunion. I've seen rangers that I've worked with in the past, uh, friends, leaders, that every, everyone that's impacted my life, like I said, it's, uh, it's not every time you get something th like this great, and it's usually at a funeral, and you're not able to enjoy it, so it's, a, uh, <laughs> it's an honor to see it while I'm living. <laughs> Thank you to our dedicated leaders, sergeant majors and generals, who dedicate a lifetime of leadership to our military. You are heroes as well. Admiral McCraven, you are one seal that any ranger can look up to. Thank you for your leadership, friendship. We're going hunting later on when we're both retired. <laughs> General Carrilla, you are the man. I look forward to seeing you continue to execute, execute greatness through the ranks. Thank you for everything. Colonel Vanek, Colonel Anderson, Command Sergeant Major, uh, oh man, I messed this up. Albertson, I wrote Albertson, Anderson, Command Sergeant Major Albertson, Command Sergeant Major Felino, I wish you the best in your careers and thank you for your service to the regiment. Sergeant Major Chandler, thank you for being here as well as other guests. I, I, um, I, can't, I can't say how much this has meant to me. I will, I will remain in the Northwest and go achieve the gold mine and that's to get that degree in business before uh, my son gets his degree. I am leaving the military, but not forever. I will always be involved, and it has been the greatest honor in my life. Thank you again to all of you in attendance for helping make this day the most special for my family and I. Rangers, lead the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the benediction given by Chaplain Lasley and for the recitation of the Ranger Creed. Please receive the benediction. Heavenly Father, as we now depart this retirement ceremony, we acknowledge your presence in all things and rightfully give you thanks in all things. Bless each one here today with the faith, mercy, and grace that you alone can provide. Enable each of us to serve you, Lord, more faithfully, 
with each new day and to have the wisdom to continue to serve our communities and our great nation in ways that also rightly please you and bring honor to you. We pray these things in the most holy name of your Son, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please join us for a reception held in Delta Company. On behalf of Master Sergeant Petrie and the 2nd Ranger Battalion, thank you for attending. Rangers lead the way.